Hey guys, bringing you another quick tip tutorial here and this time it'll be on quick cloth creation. So what I want to do first is just insert a sphere. It can really be anything, but spheres are just a little bit easier in this case. I'm just going to delete this cylinder here. Okay, we don't need that. Okay, next I'm going to insert another, okay, uh, another piece here. I'm going to insert a plane. Okay, so a plane and what I want to do is actually find the plane and just move it. I want to make sure that it's facing up and you'll see I'm just going to move that there and we're just going to move this around making sure, rotating it first, making sure it's above the plane here okay or above the sphere okay next i'm going to go down to geometry okay i want to go to dynamic subdivisions i want to put dynamic subdivisions on okay so i have dynamic selected i want to bring the thickness up okay that's going to give us some thickness so we can actually see it all around i also want to make sure that the post subdivision is disabled okay smooth subdivision we can keep that on two or one depending I also want to go down to crease and then bring the crease level down to about one maybe. I have it on two here, but I think one would be pretty sufficient. That just depends on what you want. And I brought the smooth subdivision up to three. Okay, what I'm going to do next is work with dynamics here just to create the cloth. Okay, so bring the dynamics menu over to the side here. And what I want to do is click on recalculate. Okay, that's going to calculate these mesh volumes. And I have to click on run simulation. And before I do that, I want to make sure gravity strength is on about 10. You'll notice it's drifting to the side, which is what I don't want. I want it to go up and down here, but if you click it, right, it keeps doing that. So what I want to do is click on set direction, and that'll make sure it kind of goes up and down instead of left or right, because that's the way it was facing when it was brought in. So we we'll click on run simulation, and that should now fix the error there. Okay, if we run it, you'll now notice that it also hits the floor. I don't actually want the floor to be there. You can if you want, but in this case, I don't want it. So I'm going to click off of floor collision so we don't have that. And then we click on run simulation and now we can use this and there's just one more problem it's kind of uneven so if you notice if i rotate around here it's kind of you know on one area mainly so what i want to do is manually do it so i'm going to press b t and click on transpose cloth okay and now i'm going to manually move this down and this is transposing the cloth so it's now sort of using the physics to transpose the cloth and you'll notice i'm moving it down very slowly and then moving up up again and then moving it back down okay so there now it's kind of even I'm bringing it down a little bit and it should be pretty even here right it is close so it won't be exactly even but that's good enough for what we need okay so next i'm going to go to apply under dynamics so now we don't have dynamic subdivisions it's actual subdivisions and we don't need the subdivision so i'm going to delete lower okay and i'm also going to dynamesh this so under geometry dynamesh click on dynamesh and we want the resolution a bit higher so let's bring it up let's see what we get and i have about let's see half a million points that's probably not enough for what we want to do because it's cloth so let's bring it up a little bit more let's dynamesh that and i think yeah about three million should be good enough if you're on one or two million it should still be fine okay so here we have our cloth to work with and next let's press b s and h for the snake hook just so we can move this around okay just to kind of get that cloth look and this is more tattered cloth so we can already leave it if we want normal cloth okay but yeah i'm just kind of kind of tattered a little bit and just add a little bit of wear and tear so as you can imagine you just want these areas to kind of be ripped out and here i have an image right so something along these lines right like this tattered sort of suit okay something along these lines and we really want those edges to kind of flay out a little bit and so here just pushing up with the snake hook again bsh okay just fast forwarding through that just kind of um you know detailing areas here and there and obviously you want to put a little bit more work into this depending on how detailed you want to go but i think this is sufficient for the example Okay, just smoothing out some areas as well and then dynameshing by control clicking and dragging okay that should be good enough uh, for now right we don't really need to go too detailed next i'm going to go to the clay build up i'm going to hold on spacebar click on the freehand and you notice we've got freehand here but hold on spacebar click on the freehand and go to spray that's what we want we want to spray this on okay so just like that and right now we want to get that to the cloth pattern so this is a really quick way uh, to create cloth a cloth pattern just a really sort of worn out uh, cloth pattern uh, if you don't want this one you could use alphas which i will show you how to use next so i'm just going to clear this one half here right just a little bit of that okay just detailing that here and there i'm holding down alt as well from time to time next one i go to deformation as well or masking rather not deformation and then mask by cavity okay i'm going to flip that by control clicking and i just want to mask out these errors because we don't need that we only need the errors here i'll show you that piece a little bit later so here you can see some areas just a little bit, uh, they've got some cavities here and there, so we don't need that. Okay, next we're going to go to deformation and then inflate. So I want to inflate that by minus one. Okay, so that's going to push it in, not pull it out. 
and now we have that and we're just going to redynamize that and you'll notice that we have quite a bit of detail here you could go in a little bit more so maybe minus two i think that minus two is a bit much and yeah if you want you can smooth out some areas so just control uh, shift clicking and dragging that will shift out these or rather smooth out these areas okay so that's pretty good that just kind of depends on personal preference what you want next i'm going to click on standard go to the alpha you notice that we don't have an alpha on standard so i'm going to click on import and i'll choose the burlap and weave so if you want to get that you can go to the to the zbrush site okay so just type in zbrush alphas it'll bring you to the pixelogic site here okay it'll bring you to the pixelogic site and over here if you scroll down you'll see textiles and you can just select any one of these there's quite a few here my tiles aren't loading for some reason but i selected those two there okay so burlap and weave 03 and you can choose whichever one so i'm just going to click on open i'm going to hold down space bar click on weave 3 and i want burlap in this case and i'm just going to make sure that we um, drag this so hold on space bar instead of dots i want drag rectangle so drag that out okay so dragging that out and we can kind of just click and drag that's a bit strong for now so what i want to do is just hold on space bar and bring down the z intensity to about seven or something and so now that's a pretty good uh, intensity there Okay, so just clicking and dragging and that will just kind of cover this area here. This is the simple cloth, right, one without wear and tear. And then we've got this side where it's just worn out. So I'm just going to fast forward through this a little bit just to get through that. But as you can see, pretty easy on that part there. So back to our detailed area, right, with the wear and tear. Let's just go back to the dots and I want to make sure it's on, instead of spray, I want drag rectangle or freehand rather for my clay build up. Okay, I'm going to store my morph target. So morph target, store morph target. And I'm just going to dig in here. Okay, just to kind of get a little bit more tattoo and wear to this. Okay, I'm going to press B and G. So B, M, and then G for the morph brush. That, that'll just morph this back out. Okay, so B, M, G works with the morph target, which will just morph out that area, basically to a reset point. Okay, so again, just digging in as well. You can get a little bit more creative with this. I'm just kind of showing you areas here and there, not the whole piece. Just to kind of give you an idea of what you can do. Okay, I'm going to press 1 a few times just to kind of redo that. And then here again, BMG, just to morph that back out. Okay, just to suggest a hole. You can create holes as well if you want, but I'm just keeping it pretty simple here. Okay, next we've got the damn standard. And what I'm going to do is just kind of create a little bit more wear and tear around these areas because they shouldn't be so smooth. So I'm just going to press the Alt and then move it around. And just dig into it with the damn standard and then also using the normal damn standard to just push into it as well just to kind of make sure these areas aren't too smooth right because right now they're actually quite uh, they're a little too soft and smooth and they should be a little bit rugged and they're still a little too smooth so we'll add something to that to make sure that it's not so soft right just to give it a little bit more rugged and worn and torn look okay but yeah going through these areas you kind of get the point right Okay, I'm, I'm going to press B, C, and we're going to go to Curve Tube. Okay, so B, C, and then Curve Tube, that one right there. Not Curve Tube Snap, but just Curve Tube. We're going to click and drag down. Now, that size is pretty high, so we're going to press S for size and bring down the size to about 3 or 4, just depending on how thick you want this to be. So if we drag that, that's quite thin, so I think maybe 4 should be a good size. So S, 4, for the size of 4, and now we're just going to drag these areas here, right, just to create a little bit more of that sort of torn, worn look on the cloth. Okay, here as well, just in between these areas. Okay, now I kind of get the idea. Okay, you notice that I'm dragging and I'm clicking outside and then dragging and then clicking outside just to get rid of those dashed lines because you don't want those dashed lines connecting. You'll see me doing it here, here and there. Okay, again, and you'll also notice that my spacing is very even. What you should do is kind of group them together and then maybe create a little bit more spacing and also just a little bit more variation in the length. Mine is just kind of the same length over and over, which is a bit monotonous. Just something we want to avoid. Okay, I'm just going to move that with the move topological. Just kind of move it into the cloth. Okay, and I'm going to dynamesh it and then just smooth it out. Just so we have that worn look. Okay, so something like that. And same thing over here. Just smoothing it out and then using the damn standard again. Just to push in and pull out. Uh, you know, again, because it's too smooth because we smooth it out. And you could go back in there with a clay build up with that same technique we used at first. But I also feel like the edge of the cloth is a little bit different from the insides of the cloth. So that's why. And again, okay, uh, pretty much another technique by now. I'm just going again with the, the standard brush or the clay buildup and just really fast forwarding through this because you kind of get the point by now. But like I said, make sure that these areas aren't as, or these these tubes aren't as uh, well spaced as mine. Like mine are pretty much evenly spaced. 
but you're going to get quite a bit of randomness uh, with these points, right? They're not going to be so organized. Okay, again, just moving them and then dynameshing and then just adding a little bit of detail here and there. And by now you kind of get the point. Okay. Okay, and that's pretty much it. And obviously you have to look at your references. So you can kind of see where to go, what to do, and just kind of how to space these about. But I think that's a pretty good look for that. And yeah, that is actually pretty much it for this tutorial. So like it if you liked it, dislike it. If you didn't, let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section. And hey, if you really like my content, you can check out the paid tutorials uh, in the description below. And yeah, that is it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one.